10. I'm getting older, man. Really need closer, man. I'm getting closer, man. You could throw they hot up them Ravens. House full of kid, a couple watches, no Raven. Time to hold the stones. Chasing after commas. Tired of seeing death. I'm tired of seeing these crying mamas. Choppers get to spit and they were spitting like some llamas. Used to hurt the block, but now it's hiding in the sun. I'm gone. Oh, you're that pain. Oh, you're that pain. Don't use that pain to make me grow. Ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. She the devil on me close. I done live that way before. I can't go. Mm -hmm. I can't go. Mm -hmm. Looking back, it could have been different for sure. Mm -hmm. Been around that block for real. I done seen a lot for real. Could have felt them shots for real. Teddy bears on my block for real. That grace and mercy real. Like new birth for real. I'm from the cross to say the lost them sweets, they hurt for real. Don't use that pain. United States of America 
is on high alert. I want everybody to hear me. Your government is on high alert. Nuclear alert right now. They on high alert. Man, get your pencil and paper. Get your pencil and paper. Oh, uh, James, you driving. All right, my mama. You guys gonna wanna write this down. If you can't write it down, we got a Patreon. My wife put all of the scriptures on Patreon. After every lesson I do, But this right here today, this is gonna be the first time this is ever shown to the world. It's gonna blow your mind, baby. Alright, Teresa Blue. You guys, you know I watch everything, right? Because I'm God's servant. It's my job to see everything. And I mean everything. The days and times that we living in. How you gonna let the IRS tell you when to come down to the IRS building? and thousands of you show up. You talking about leading the sheep to the slaughter, Miss Mary C. Good job, Mary C, keep it up. You talking about program, Brother Malachi, and leading the sheep to the slaughter, Brother Anab. You, they tell you to go somewhere to get your money and you go and you stand in line with the government that want to get rid of you. You obey like sheep being led to the slaughter and you go down there and get in a line. Now, Satan is very very wise, but we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. We are not ignorant of the devil's devices. Let's just say that he already know some of the places that he going to smoke. And I just decide to lead you down <laughs> to one of the places that I plan on dropping an A-bomb on. <laughs> Boy, it's gonna make it easy for Satan to kill us. It's gonna make it easy. That's in the sealed portion. That if we all gather in one place, it's gonna make it easy for Satan to take us out. Because if you think he ain't watching and trying to get us into one place to take us out, then you don't know Satan. Satan trying to get us into one place so he can take us out, baby. All right. 
Get your pencil and get your paper. I'm going to wait a little while longer, play a couple of more songs, because what I got to show you today, what I got to show you today, only you are going to know this mystery. I'm about to show you a mystery. God gave it to me this morning. It was in the seal potion the whole time. I read over it about 10 times. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I want everybody to be getting ready, prepared. That's right. They better, well on this channel, we preach repentance and baptism. I feel you hurt, lay down in burdens. I know you work it hard, I know you work it hard. Give it up. You still a work of art. You still give it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get your pencil and get your paper. I'm going to go real slow. You ready, Daphne? I know you ready. Get your pencil. Get your paper. Welcome to Gadai University. On this channel, we give honor to all of the prophets that we know God sent. And this morning, we're going to show you the prophet Muhammad in the Bible. Hidden. Boy, John and Daniel, them boys use symbolism. And they use allegories. Symbolism and allegories. Your Bible is full of symbolism. You ready? Honor the most high. And allegories. All right. Watch. Honor the most high said, let's get it. We're going to get it. Much love, much respect to the whole family. East, West, North, and South. Every Muslim on this channel, get your pencil and get your paper. Get your pencil and get your paper my Muslim brothers and sisters because I'm about to make you run around the house today. I'm about to make you run out around the house today. Allah Akbar, that's right. I'm about to make all of my Muslim brothers and sisters run around the house today. Greetings. Let's get started. All right. Let's go first to Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Proverbs 3 and 5. In the Lord with all thine heart and lean not and lean not unto thy own understanding and lean not 
unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Be not wise in your own eyes. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge God and he will direct your path. Now, go with me to the book of Amos, chapter 3 and verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. He what? He revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. He revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, not the evangelists, not the pastor, not the teacher, but, and not the apostle. He revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets. This is going to be the first time on the internet and in the world that we are about to show you the Bible and its symbolism as to the last prophets that will be on the earth before the second coming of Christ. Go with me to seal potion 33. No, before we do that, go to second Nephi 27. We're going to take care of the gang says. Second Nephi 27, 7. And behold, the book shall be sealed. And in the book shall be a revelation from God from the beginning of the world to the ending thereof. In the sealed portion, there is a revelation from God. Go to sealed potion 35, 113. We're proving it. Sealed potion 35, 113 to 115. But the book shall be delivered unto a man and he shall deliver the words of the book, which are the words of those who have slumbered in the dust. And he shall deliver these words unto another. But the words which are sealed, he shall not deliver. Neither shall he deliver the book. For the book shall be sealed by the power of God. And the revelation which was sealed shall be kept in the book until the own due time of the Lord, that was 2019, that they may come forth. For behold, they reveal all things from the foundation of the world until the end thereof. And the day cometh that the words of the book which were sealed shall be read upon the housetops, and they shall be read by the power of Christ and all things shall be revealed 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 and all things shall be revealed, shall be revealed, shall be revealed unto the children of men 
whichever has been among the children of men and whichever will be even until the end of the earth. All things shall be revealed unto the children of men. All right, go to sealed potion 33. And 65. For some of you, you might have to watch this lesson three times. This straight meat. This ain't no milk. And at the height, still potion, 33, 65. And at the height, of the power and glory of the Roman Empire, the Holy Ghost had ceased to communicate with the children of men. Nevertheless, it was still in the period of the times as was spoken of by John and Daniel. Pay attention. What he say? Write down the times. T. I-M-E-S. Allah Akbar. What I'm going to show you today, Raja, get your pencil and paper. I'm going to show you the Prophet Muhammad in the book of Daniel. In symbolism. And at the height of the power and glory of the Roman Empire, the Holy Ghost had ceased to communicate with the children of men. Nevertheless, it was still in the period of the times, write down times, as was spoken by John and Daniel, in that the spirit and authority of God was not entirely taken from off the earth. For Lehi, whose name in the Bible is Elisa, for Lehi, God changed his name to Lehi. He was a high priest in ancient Jerusalem. For Lehi had departed out of Jerusalem before the rise of the Roman Empire. Stop. What? Lehi had left Jerusalem before, before the rise of the Roman Empire. Where did he go? God brought him to the Americas before the rise of the Roman Empire. And he took with him the authority of God and the spirit was also with my fathers even as it is with me at this time and the beginning of the period of the times began just before the time of Lehi and it shall end shortly after my time. Stop. Verse 67. But before the Spirit of God is taken off the earth for the second time, another great prophet shall rise up after my time and before the time of the two prophets of the latter days. And this great prophet shall, that shall rise up after my time shall be the last final prophet that the Lord shall send forth upon the earth until, until the latter days. And he is the last prophet of the period of the time even the second period that the children of men should be given the authority of God and the spirit to inspire them. And after this period of the times shall end, there shall be great spiritual darkness upon the earth. And this prophet shall be called Mohammed. Stop. I want you to take the word times all 
I want you to take. Write down the word times. T-I-M-E-S. Put an equal sign next to it. Put Prophet Mohammed. This is symbolism. God is hiding this knowledge from the rest of the world. The word times is talking about the prophet Muhammad. And I'm going to prove it. Go back to verse 65. And at the height of the power and glory of the Roman Empire, the Holy Ghost had ceased to communicate with the children of men. Nevertheless, it was still in the period of the times as was spoken of by John and Daniel. Stop. So John and Daniel spoke of this period of the times go go to Daniel 7 25 the word times is talking about the private Mohammed Daniel 7 25 And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times until a time and time. Prophet Muhammad represents the times. We were given into their hand until a time that Lehi left ancient Jerusalem and then the Spirit of God came back in the earth with the Prophet Muhammad during the time I'm not done. Go to, he said, Daniel and John spoke about this. Go to, go to Revelation. Let's get John. 12. This is symbolism. And 14. And to the woman were given two ways of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, Lehi, and times, the prophet Muhammad, and half of times, Joseph Smith. <laughs> right now, half of times equals Joseph Smith. Right now, times equals Prophet Muhammad, write down time equals Lehi. We were delivered into their hands until these times. Lehi, time. Prophet Muhammad, times with S on the end. Joseph Smith, half of time. Now one more. Seal potion, 68, 58. We got the times, Lehi. Times with S on the end. Prophet Muhammad. Half of time. I'm going to show you. Joseph Smith. Meridian of time. 
me. Oh, you better hear it. Hey, they go the Holy Ghost. Hey. Oh. I'm about to oh, the Holy Ghost showed me this this morning, baby. God said the time represents Lehi. The times represent the prophet Muhammad. The half of time represents Joseph Smith. The meridian of time represents the last prophet. delivered into their hands until the authority of God went with Lehi. Spiritually, that freed us because the earth was covered in darkness. Then, during the times, I'm going to read it, God went to the prophet Muhammad. And during the half of time, he went to Joseph Smith. And in sealed potion, 6858, he raised me up in the meridian of time. And then Christ is coming at the end of the half of time. Go now. So he said, John, go back. To seal potion 33 and 65. And at the height of the power and glory of the Roman Empire, the Holy Ghost had ceased to communicate with the children of men. Nevertheless, it was still in the period of the times as was spoken. By John, where? Revelation 12, 14. And Daniel, where? Daniel 7, 25. And that the spirit and authority of God was not entirely taken off the earth. And Lehi had departed out of Jerusalem but for the rise of the Roman Empire. And he took with him the authority of God. And the spirit was also with my fathers, even as it is with me at this time. And the beginning of the period of the times began just before the time of Lehi. And it shall end shortly after my time. But before the spirit of God is taken off the earth for the second time. Another great prophet shall rise up after my time and before the time of the two prophets of the latter days and before the time of the two prophets of the latter days. And this great prophet that shall rise up after my time shall be the last and final prophet that the Lord shall send forth upon the earth until, until the latter days. And he is the last prophet of the period of times. And he is the last prophet of the period of times. Lehi was the first prophet of the period of times. Then came Muhammad during the period of time. Another great prophet shall rise up after my time and before the time of the two prophets of the latter days. And this great prophet that shall rise up after my time, you got the time, then you got the times. Lehi left, God took his spirit after he died. 
Let's read 66 again. And Lehi had departed out of Jerusalem before the rise of the Roman Empire. And he took with him the authority of God. And the Spirit was also with my father, even as it with me at this time. And the beginning of the period of times began just before the time of Lehi. And it shall end. And it shall end. And it shall end. And it shall end. After my time. And it shall end. After my time. But before the Spirit of God is taken off the earth for the second time. Another great prophet shall rise up after my time. After my time. After my time. After my time, and before, and before, and before the time of the two prophets of the latter days. And this great prophet that shall rise up after my time, after my time, shall be the last and final prophet that the Lord shall send forth upon the earth until the latter days until the latter days and he is the last prophet of the period of the times and he is the last prophet of the period of the times even the second period even the second period even the second period that the children of men shall be given the authority of god and the spirit to inspire them. And after this period of the times shall end, there shall be great spiritual darkness upon the earth. So after the time, Muhammad came 600 years after Christ. After Christ and the disciples were all killed. And in seal potion 65, the Gentiles, 42 months began. In Revelations 11 and 2, the Gentiles, 42 months began. And this was the time of spiritual darkness. When the prophet Muhammad was sent by God, light the gospel came back into the earth. Let's go. Seal potion 66 and 54. Seal potion 66 and 54. Now, the God of the Hebrews is about to raise up the prophet Muhammad. Let me say it again. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is about to raise up the prophet Muhammad. What's in the book? a revelation from God concerning the beginning of the world to the end of the world. Here is the revelation from the God of the Hebrews. Verse 54. No, 45, forgive me, 45, 66 and 45. And now, I, Moroni, do not recount all of the words which Jesus spoke unto Muhammad. For many of them, if not all, 
were the same words which he has given unto all of the holy prophets whom he had called to teach his will unto the children of men. And all these words have I given in this record. Stop. Jesus Christ is the one that talked to, raised up, <laughs> laid hands, anointed the prophet Muhammad. Here is Jesus Christ calling the prophet Muhammad. But in one thing, the Lord did command Muhammad that he had not commanded to his apostles at Jerusalem. And that which the Lord commanded him was that which I had already given unto you in this record concerning the name of Jesus and the insignificance of this name or any name by which God is called by the different cultures and people of the world. Stop. This is where we can't lean into our own understanding. Now here is God raising up the prophet Muhammad and he's not going to give him the names that he gave to the Christians. Because at this time, the Christians had given the name Jesus a bad name, a bad rap. Nobody at this time wanted to be a Christian because the Christians were killing people and forcing them into Christianity during the Crusades. So here is Christ going now to try to reach the Arabs. And what is he telling the Mohammed? Watch what he tell Mohammed. Verse 47. And I have written already unto you saying, and according to these cultures and traditions, we have been taught the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, this gospel is not called the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the traditions and customs of the many different peoples of the world. What? I'm about to run the hell out the house. I'm about to run out the house. What'd he say? He said, I'm going to give the Muslims the gospel, but it ain't going to be called the gospel of Jesus Christ. See the devil on me close. I done live that way before. I can't go. I can't go. Looking back, it could have been different. I'm gonna give the gospel to the Muslim nation, and it will not be called. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't use that pain to make me grow. I done been through everything, but that grain protect my soul. Had to change that road. I done lost some homies to them deals and lost some to them poles. Hallelujah! Grace and mercy held me strong. I done been down before. I done felt that rain and helped me grow. I used to be doing The God of the Hebrew nation. God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are higher than your ways. As the heavens are above the earth. This is our problem. We think we know God. 
we don't know God. He does what he want, when he want, and how he want. And he ain't got to ask none of us a damn thing. Different. Oh, I took a lot of L's cause I never did listen. Let me go down there and ask you Hebrews what you think about this. Like hell. Yeah. Like a soda can. I'm getting older, man. Really need closer, man. He does what he wants, when he wants, and how he wants. And he not held accountable to no man. In the book shall be a revelation from God from the beginning of the world to the end thereof. Hey, most. Three, seven. He revealed this secret unto his servants, the prophets. Come on, Jesus, come. And I have written, verse 47, and I have written, come on out of here, cook Jesus, and I have written already unto you, say, and according to these cultures and traditions, we have been taught the gospel of Jesus Christ. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. This is the first and the greatest commandment. The second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you will have them do unto you. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, this gospel is not called the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the traditions and customs of the many different peoples of the world. And it does not matter to the Lord in what name he is called, for it is his desire to give unto all the laws of his gospel. Let these laws be called by whatever name they might be called. And also, let him be called by whatever name he may be called according to the different cultures and traditions of the children of men. And the Lord spoke unto my fathers when he visited them after his resurrection and ascension and he said unto them and verily verily I say unto you that I have other sheep which are not of this land neither of the land of Jerusalem neither in any part of that land round and about whether I have been to minister for they of whom I speak are they who have not as yet heard my voice. Neither have I at any time manifested myself unto them. But I have received a commandment of the Father that I shall go unto them and that they shall hear my voice and shall be numbered among my sheep that there may be one foe and one shepherd. Therefore I go to show myself unto them. Stop. Therefore I go to the prophet Mohammed to give him my gospel to give to the Muslims. I'm going to keep reading. And when he give it to the Muslims they can call me whatever name they want to call me. As long as they love Allah with all their heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. As long as they love their neighbor as themselves. As love, 
Lo, as they do unto others, as they would have them do unto them, they are my sheep. again but I have received a commandment of the father that I should go unto them and that they should hear my voice and shall be numbered among my sheep that there may be one fold and one shepherd therefore I go to show myself unto them now, I Moroni, this is higher knowledge. This knowledge too high for a fool. Now, I Moroni, ask of you, do you know the name by which the Lord is called by these other sheep who had not yet heard his voice at the time he presented himself to my father? Do you not know that his name is not important to him? If it so be that they believe in him and keep his commandments. And what say ye, even of those who are reading this record, that the Lord hath commanded me to make and hath instructed me to write the things that the Spirit whispers unto me. Again, what say ye? If you heard me pronounce the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, according to my own language, which was taught to me by the traditions and the cultures of my fathers, would you understand of whom I speak, behold, I say unto you that you will not understand the words that I would speak. And likewise, I will not understand the words that you would speak. And if I pronounce the name of the Lord in a different manner, or if I call him by a different name than you, or if I call him by a different name than you. What think you then about the name of Jesus Christ? And if my Lord and my God is called Kuma Kenan, and if my Lord and my God is called Kuma Kenan, and it is this being whom I worship and obey. What say ye of my righteousness then? And if it so be that Kuma Kenan hath established a church among my people, which is established according to our traditions and our culture, which of a surety is different than your own, which I know is different than your own, different than your own. Is it then a sin to worship our God in this manner, who is now called 
Jesus Christ by us? By but who is the same God whom you worship according to your tradition? And if our prophets whom we call Sarah, Sarah Libyan teach us the law of Kumagetan and teach us that we should love our enemies and do good to them that hate us and persecute us. And if we live our lives in harmony with the spirit of Kumagetan as we are taught by our cerebrum are we to be condemned for not taking upon us the name of Jesus Christ only because we do not understand this name and it cannot be understood by us according to our language and our culture behold I say unto you that when the Lord visited these people who are some of the other sheep that have not heard his voice, he shall allow them to call him Cuba Kenan, or by whatever name they have been taught to worship by their cerebrum. And this does not take away the efficacy of the holy name of Christ by which all men shall be saved. For I have written upon this record the meaning of the symbolism of which a name is given. And again, I say unto you that all names are symbolic of the works that are associated with that name. And it is not by the works of Christ or Cuma Kenan or by whatever name he might be called that we are saved. I say unto you that it is by the works which the name of Christ symbolizes by which we are saved. Behold, we are not saved by his name, but by that which he hath accomplished for us. Therefore, it mattereth not unto the Father by what name we call him are those whom he hath commissioned to serve us and bring us back to his kingdom. And if there are churches and religions that are named according to the customs and traditions of a different people of the world. And if these have their own written word, which is their holy scriptures, then what difference would they have in the eyes of the Lord? If it so be that they teach his gospel, I say unto you, that there is no difference. And if these teach the words of the gospel of Christ, then they are accepted by God. <laughs> I gotta stop right there. Cause we gotta break that religious mindset that we have been taught in the Christian church. Everybody all over the earth, according to their traditions, can call God by whatever name their traditions and their cultures call him. We need to break that spell that the Christian church put on us.
They taught us that we're going to be saved by the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is symbolic for the works that you do. going to be judged according to our works not a name the name is symbolic for the law of the gospel let's prove it go to revelation 22 and 12 and behold I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Stop. Blessed are they that do his commandments, not a name. Now do you understand? why the book of revelations said that Christ got a name that no man know because when Christ come we are gonna be calling on one name when the father come the whole earth gonna be calling on one name when he comes why we'll be under the same language will be under the same language. The whole earth will be at that time back to the language of Adam. The atomic tongue is coming back in the earth. That's why Right now, it don't matter what name you call in him. He wants you to love your neighbor as yourself. Make that your number one job. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. Do unto others as you will have them do unto you. The Muslims are the other sheep. The Hindus are the other sheep. Let's keep reading. Verse 63. Remember, here come the times spoken of in Daniel 7.25. Here come the times spoken of by John, Revelations 12 and 14. So when you see in your Bible, time, times, times, talking about Muhammad, times. Half of time, talking about Joseph Smith. And we're going to prove it. Verse 63. 66 and 63. And now, the Lord did not woe Mohammed 
to use the name of Jesus Christ among the people to whom he would be sent to teach his gospel and the reason for which he commanded this of Muhammad was because those who profess to be followers of Jesus Christ, even the Christians who were already many upon the earth, had corrupted the true gospel of the Father by the name of Jesus Christ. Stop. Remember, Jesus only do what God told him to do. God sent Jesus to the prophet Muhammad, told him, do not use my name. Do not use my name because the Christians have corrupted my teachings. Remember, this is 600 years after Christ. Verse 64, and many of their leaders had taught the people erroneous doctrines regarding the name of Jesus and therefore to avoid any conflict with the Christians that they might think of themselves above the Jews. Muhammad was prohibited from using the name of Jesus or the Christ as he went about to teach the gospel to the people. Nevertheless, Muhammad was commanded <clears throat> to instruct the people to maintain great respect for any of the true parts of the gospel that still remain among the Christians who profess to be followed Jesus Christ and also those truths that remain among the Jews. And he was commanded to make no mention of the visitation of the Father or of the appearance of Christ who was known as Jesus Christ in the flesh so that no more conflict concerning these days would come to pass among the people. But since both the Jews and the Christians believe in the appearance of angels, and since one of the most accepted names of an angel among both of these sects was the angel Gabriel, Muhammad was therefore commanded that he should recount the visitation of the Father and of the Son to the people as a vision and visitation from Archangel Gabriel, who he would testify to him that he was to be a prophet of the Almighty God. Stop. In the book, shall be a revelation from God from the beginning of the world to the end thereof. God told Jesus <laughs> to tell Mohammed that it was the angel Gabriel that visited him. And not God and Christ 
who really visited him. Why? Can you see the Jews? Can you see the Christians mad as hell? They probably would have killed Muhammad. Jealous, mad, jealous as hell. They would have killed Muhammad. Muhammad would have came out there and said, the God of the Hebrews visited me and they was teaching, hello. <laughs> the God of the Hebrews and his son visited me. All hell would have broke out. Verse 68. And the Lord instructed Mohammed in many things and sent other angels down unto him to give unto him the authority and commission to preach the gospel to the people. And it came to pass that after three days of visitations from these heavenly messengers, Mohammed returned to the house of Kedija, his wife, and related that which he was commanded to give unto the people. And his wife, from that moment, believed on the words of Muhammad and became his disciple. And it came to pass that Muhammad went forth among the people and taught them the gospel of Jesus Christ or the gospel of our life as had been instructed by the Lord to give unto the people. Stop. The gospel of our life. I told you we serve the same God. Now, what other people do, you don't look at the people to judge your religion. You didn't do that to the Christians. You didn't look, you didn't do that to the Christians. You became a Christian after they killed your ancestors. But here you are today because our Muslim brothers and sisters are calling God Allah. Here you are judging them, trying to tell them that they worship in another God. No, they ain't. They worship in the God of the Hebrews the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, they can call him Allah. The people in Japan can call him what they want according to their traditions and their customs. The people in Japan can call him what they want according to their traditions and their customs. The people in Papua New Guinea can call him what they want according to their traditions and their customs. gospel of our life is what 
Jesus Christ told him. And the people mocked Mohammed for those things which he taught unto them. But among the poor and the outcasts, he did gain much success in those things which he taught unto them. And again, I say unto you that I shall not give herein a detailed explanation of those things which he taught to the people. For he taught the exact same gospel that Jesus had taught during his ministry, changing nothing except for the names by which he called the Father and the Son from home. He had received these things. Stop. He changed nothing but took the same exact gospel. <laughs> the only thing that was changed was the name. That's because you don't know the Bible. And that's our problem. We don't speak from a foundation of intelligence. We speak from a foundation of what the slave master taught you. I'm reading from the book of the seven seals. The book in Revelations 5 and 1. Isaiah 29, 10 to 14. Lean not unto thy own understanding. So stop sounding like the white man and get off of Google because you sound stupid. The children of Israel are Israelites. Paul told you he was a Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. All 12 tribes are Israelites. That is their nationality. So if you say it's made up, no, my friend, you made up. You call yourself African. Africans don't call themselves Africans. You call yourself black. You brown. My shirt is black. Everything you believe and think you understand is all a lie. Ain't no such thing as African Americans. That's two continents. Wake up from your sleep because you sleep. I can give you scripture after scripture after scripture. Give me Isaiah 65, 15. I'm going to show you why we call by another name. Give me Deuteronomy 32, 26. Let me show you. Welcome to a channel that can teach you. Give me Deuteronomy 32, 26. I said, I will scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Isaiah 65, 15. And you shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. The Bible is full of prophecy but you got to get with somebody that got the spirit of prophecy 
that can show you. I said, I will scatter them in the corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Hosea 1 and 10, 1 11. I said, in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people. In that place, it shall be said that you are the children of the living God. You need to be taught. Get off of Google. And wake up. Brothers and sisters. Christ. A few thousand years ago. Spread the gospel. All over the world. God sent Christ. Who wrote the book. The brother of Jared. Enoch's father. You need to go watch some of my older videos. We broke down the whole book. I can break it down for you again. But only the wise gonna be able to see it. <laughs> go to Isaiah 29 and 10. Only the wise gonna be able to see it. Isaiah 29 10 to 14 For the Lord had poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and had closed your eyes the prophets and your rulers the seers had been covered and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned saying, read this, I pray thee. And he says, I cannot for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying, read this, I pray thee. And he says, I am not learned. Wherefore, the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. The book is sealed. Go to Daniel 12 and 4. Go to the book of Daniel. 12 and 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, look and behold, there stood one. They stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man, clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man, clothed in linen, 
which was up on the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand under heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, Lehi, times Mohammed, and half of time Joseph Smith, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Go to Revelation chapter 5. Let's see where the book is. Revelation chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was what found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Jonah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven cells thereof. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Verse 9, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou hast, for thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us under our God, king and priest, and we shall reign on earth. When did we become kings and priests? After we got the knowledge of the book. <laughs> Go back to Isaiah 29 and 14. Only the wise can see it. Isaiah 29 and 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. Go now to seal potion 35, 129 in Isaiah. 29 and 14, God said he was going to do a marvelous work and a wonder among his people. Seal potion, the book that Christ took out of the hand of God. I'm reading from it. Third test, I mean seal potion, 35, 129. And now I'm Moroni. What that you should know that this marvelous work which shall be done among this people, yea, even this marvelous work and a wonder, is the coming forth into the world, the things which are sealed, even this record that had been revealed unto you, and the wisdom 
of the wise and the learned shall perish. When? When we get the knowledge of the book. Go back. <laughs> Go back to Daniel 12 and 4. Go back to Daniel 12 and 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the word and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Go now to seal potion 35, I mean 68, seal potion. 68, 94 to 96. And now, I, Moroni, ask of you, do you understand these words? I say unto you that I know that you do not understand that of which Daniel had spoken, unless you have the spirit to give unto you the meaning of these things. For thus it is written, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And if you are reading my words that are given in this record, then you are wise and have been guided in the Holy Spirit. And these things which have been sealed are the things which Daniel was not allowed to write and are the words that are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. This is the book that no man in heaven, on earth, or under the earth was found worthy to open or to loose the seals thereof. Give me Psalms 119 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. <laughs> you can take Psalm 11989, put it with Revelations 5 and 1. Now you ask where the book came from. How many people seen it? Now I'm supposed to ask you, did you see it? <laughs> if you didn't see it, God don't want you to see it. Can you put a number eight in here if you can see it? In the book is a revelation from God from the beginning of the world to the end thereof. Tear down the matrix. Go and make seal potion 84 and 14. Let's tear down the matrix. Seal potion 
84 and 14. And in the latter days, the United States of America shall be the most powerful nation upon the earth. Stop. Stop. This is the book that was in God's hands thousands of years ago. This is Isaiah 46 and 10. He's declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times, things that are not yet done. Say, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. The name of the United States is in this book. It's in the Bible too, but in the Bible, it's in symbolism. It is the eighth beast. It is Babylon. This is the book that Christ took out of the hand of the Father. And in it is the name, the United States. Let's see what God got to say about it. Why are you going to vote? Let's see what God say about it. Cell potion. 84 and 14. And in the latter days, the United States of America shall be the most powerful nation upon the earth. And it shall also be the most wicked because it followeth in every way the plan of Lucifer. What? Let me tear down the matrix. You live in the most wicked nation that ever existed. You live in the most wicked nation that ever existed. But you live in the matrix because you believe that where you're living it's the best place on earth. America, America, America. The most wicked place on planet earth. Thus said the Lord God. Who are you voting for now? Go ahead, baby, and vote. <laughs> Go ahead, sign your name <laughs> on the most wicked nation on the planet. Wicked as hell. But on television, they make it look like it's the best thing since apple pie. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. They sell it to you. Disney World. Magic Mountain. Best place on earth. God said it's the most wickedest place on, on the earth. Go to 90 and 64. Sell potion 90. And 
64. And now I have saved the latter days and the nation of the United States, which is the most wicked nation upon the earth in regard to those who seek it to enslave the souls of the children of men so that they might get gain and not be required to work by the sweat of their own brow. Stop. Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry loud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. See that? My voice don't bother the righteous. But if you are wicked, it's going to be like somebody putting their fingers on a chalkboard. <laughs> you got a wicked spirit inside of you? Yeah, you, gonna, you ain't going to like this yelling, baby. Because them spirits know me. Hello! The most wicked. Here I am telling you that the country you live in is the most wicked. And you ask me why I'm yelling. Wicked as hell. And you're going to school in it to be a doctor. You're going to school to be a lawyer. If Christ don't hurry up and come back, I'm going, I'm going to get me a metal smith. If Christ don't hurry up and come back, I'm going down to a metal smith. Somebody know how to make metal. Know why? I got a feeling here in a minute we can make some money. If I go down to a metal place where they know how to bend and shape metal, and I'ma make, I'ma make, I'ma make a chastity, I'ma make a chastity pair of metal drawers for men, <laughs> and right where your butthole is, we gonna make sure we put three pieces of steel where your butthole can't be penetrated. And I think I'll sell them. I think I'll call them Gucci, Ala Magadi protector of the lower regions. If Christ don't hurry and come back, yeah, blockers. That's what, that's a good name. We're gonna name it blockers. We're gonna go down there, we're gonna get draws made for you men because Satan is after your rectum on a high level. He's after your, that's what he wants. He wants your bo booty hole. He wants your booty hole. Satan wants all of the men's booty holes. And I'm gonna see if I can go get some get some draws, metal draws made for the weak men, for the weak men who might be next the next targets. And I'm gonna make these draws, and we're gonna make them extra strong right there where your butthole is. And we're gonna we're gonna be able to latch it on you with a lock that can't be taken off. Come on out of here. Cut it, because all of you got your buttholes out there and you're talking about P. Diddy. Sit down and shut up. That's what America has come down to. Bunch of soft, weak, wristed, jelly back. People call themselves men. You ain't no man. You don't even know what a man is. A man finds a wife, takes care of her, has children, and he stays there, and he raises those children, and he stays in that marriage. Come hell or hot water. And he, out, and he ain't out there looking to catch AIDS. 
are the bullhead claps. He can control his penis. That's what a man is. He can control his lower regions. His, his pecker. His brain not in his pecker. His brain in his head. Too many men in America, their brain is in their drawers. That's why it's over. America is on high alert. Have they told you? Has there been any news broadcast that the nuclear forces of the United States of America are on high alert? Has there been any news broadcast? Are, are the American people deliberately being kept in the dark? I told you guys. The American people not getting no warning. The only warning is coming from the real prophets. You better put some water up. You better put some food up. If you think that they took your IRS money is only the beginning. Then you don't know this man. Eight states have no 9-11. Eight states have no 9-11 services. you what's coming. You guys ain't listening to me. Eight states are on their own like you about to be. You about to be on your own. And if you ain't got no hood knowledge, you're going to walk head first into a massacre. They're going to walk head first into a massacre. All the power going to go out. <laughs> and Negroes going to say, I got to go to the grocery store. I need some water. I got to get me some food. When you get there, all of the bad guys gonna be there with AR-15s, Mac-90s, every lethal weapon that you can see. They gonna be there. And to them, shooting you gonna be fun. told you, when the power go out, you better have what you need. Don't go to no grocery store. The bad guys going shopping. The bad guys going shopping. No 9-11, no power, you better lock your doors. And if you're 
not part of the game, or if you're not one of the homies, and you still might get backdoor. You stay home, you lock your door. Satan playing chess. Satan said, don't give the Hebrews their income taxes. Let them make brick without mortar. Let me tell you what's going on. Let we mad because they waking up. We mad because they waking up. Let's keep they social security money because they waking up. So let's make them make brick without mortar. So what is our enemies about to try to do? They're about to try to make life harder for us because we are waking up. Satan is the one behind this. Now, when the prophet Muhammad died, go back there. Go back. Start at verse 76. You guys better get ready. Now, let me show you something. Watch this. When the state of Israel attacked the embassy in Damascus, that belonged to Iran. That was done on a Sabbath day. When Iran retaliated, that was done on a Sabbath day. You guys, pay attention. Satan playing chess. Let me say it again. When Israel attacked the Iranian embassy in Damascus, that was a Saturday or a Sabbath day. When Iran retaliated, it was on a Sabbath day. Israel is planning right now again to attack Iran. I'm not saying it's going to be on a Sabbath day. What I'm saying is I'm looking at Satan using the Sabbath day to launch these wars.
cell pulse is 66 and 76. And Muhammad proclaimed that the Quran was the last revelation that God would give unto the people of that time. And he also taught unto the people that he himself was the last holy prophet who was called of God to save the people in that dispensation of time. Stop. Every prophet. No, baby. I'm sorry, Dave. Dave. You, you speaking, what you talking about? Iran and Russia got fallen angel technology. Russia got technology in their airplanes where they can fly over a battleship, turn on the switch, and the whole battleship goes dead. Iran has fallen angels technology. That's why they said out their mouth they got weapons that the world has never seen. They're both going to destroy each other. According to Bible prophecy. Not wishful thinking. All you got to do is go Google Albert Pike's Three World Wars. It's in 2nd Esdras 15. It said 2nd Ezra 16, what's about to happen? You ain't gotta be wondering. It's in the Apocrypha. They're about to destroy each other. And they coming for you Christians. <laughs> you see, what you don't know is that the Zionists are servants of Satan. And they're gonna destroy Christianity. They're gonna finish it off. They showed you the black Christ, you couldn't digest that. So now they're going to watch what they're about to do. They set up Christianity and they're going to take it down. Now, the prophet Muhammad and every prophet that was ever called of God only were given a dispensation of time. Everybody stick with me. Every prophet is given a time that God raised them up, use them, and then God take them back home. Either in martyrdom, either in martyrdom, all of the prophets, all right, they go back home. Every prophet in every dispensation of time is called under the calling of Elijah. The prophet Muhammad had the spirit of Elijah on his life to turn the hearts of the children to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers to the children. He gave the same gospel that Christ gave Adam. He gave the same gospel that Christ gave Enoch. He gave the same gospel that in Galatians chapter 3, God through Genesis 14, 18, Melchizedek, gave to Abraham the same exact gospel Christ now 600 years after he gone came back to the earth raised up the prophet Muhammad gave him the same exact gospel told him don't call my name don't 
use my name. Use another name. Because at that time, Christianity had given Christ a bad name. So Christ told the prophet Muhammad that he can use the name of their tradition, Allah. But what was important was that he gave him the gospel. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you will have them do unto you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength which is the gospel of peace everybody on the earth is trying to establish peace but they trying to do it without god and god gave the whole earth his creation the only way that they can establish peace on the earth is with his gospel so here he come now, raising up the prophet Muhammad to what? Establish peace. Verse 76, and Muhammad proclaimed that the Quran was the last revelation that God would give unto the people of that time, of that time. What revelation? The gospel of that time. And he also taught unto the people that he himself was the last holy prophet who was called of God to save the people in that dispensation of time. Where is he mentioned in the Bible? Daniel. 725 Revelations 12 and 14 Time Times And a half of time He was the last prophet Of this dispensation Of time And I have already explained Unto you that he was truly the last prophet of the time period revealed in the revelations of Daniel and John as the times. Stop. Stop. Daniel and John mentioned the prophet Muhammad in symbolism. You know, sometimes I love it. Like that pain can go, you know. Paya! You know, you know, see it all. Go use that pain to make me grow. See the devil on me close. I done lay that way before. I can't fall. I can't go. Looking back, it could have been different for sure. Been around that block for real. I done seen a lot for real. Could've felt them shots for real Teddy bears on my block for real That grace and mercy real Like new birth for real I'm from the cross to say the lost Some streets they hurt for real Go use that pain Go use that pain to make me grow I done been through everything But that grace protect my soul Had to change that road I done lost some homies to them deals And lost some to them poles Just feel like this Could've been dead and gone Grace and mercy held me strong I done been down before I done felt that rain they helped me grow I used to be doing the most To Christ he came and saved me Ain't no real love up in them streets for real. From A to Z, we did it all. Ain't nothing to see for real. Blood cover me from catching them shots. I'll leave it a tweet for real. Now I'm out here preaching on the same blocks where I used to be for real. Gonna use that pain to make me grow. See the devil on me close. I done lay that way before. I can't fall. I can't go. Don't take me, you know. Been around that block for real. I done seen a lot for real. Could've felt them shots for real. Teddy bears on my block for real. That grace and mercy real, like new birth for real. I'm from the cross to say the lost some streets they hurt for real. Don't use that pain, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got them brothers when we standing in the rain, we not the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All this trauma I've been dealing with, this pain I'm on the same. Never fold it could have been different. But I took a lot of L's cause I never
never did listen Try to get it right with Pratt Life is more, huh? Try to fill these empty voids, tell me what am I missing, yeah like a soda can, I'm getting older, man. Really need closure, man. I'm getting closer, man. Kick a dough, they hopped up them way bins. House for the kid, a couple watches, no way, man. Tired of life's gone, stress never comes. Tired of seeing death, I'm tired of seeing these crying mamas. Choppers get to spitting, they were spitting like some llamas. Used to hurt the block, but now it's hard to dip inside them. Who goes? 60 years old, baby. Still dancing. Don't use that pain to make me grow. Ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. See the devil on me close. I don't live that way before. I can't fall. Mm -hmm. I can't go. Mm -hmm. Looking back, it could have been different for sure. Mm -hmm. Been around that block for real. I done seen a lot for real. Could have felt them shots for real. Teddy bears on my block for real. That grace and mercy real. Like new birth for real. I'm from the cross to say the lost some streets they hurt for real. Don't use that pain. Right now, time equals Lehigh. Time equals the Prophet Muhammad. Half of time equals the Prophet Joseph Smith. The meridian of time in seal post in 6858 represents Elder Ayer. You know it's almost over when God show us this. I know it's almost over, baby. When he showed me this this morning, I said, it's over. It's over. I said, it's over. When God showed me this this morning, I said, it's over. It's over. It's a done daughter. It's over, baby. face the ancient of days. Bless the name of the Father, perfect in all of his ways. Mighty in the express. Mighty deep in the seas, strong tower for the righteous, refuge for those who believe. I praise him in my hell storm. Through the airport tears, he catches everyone till I'm done. Then his rainbow appears. I thank the for his covenant. His his old, baby. But you see how awesome the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is? He hid this knowledge. Right in front of the Gentiles' faces. Right in front of the Hebrews' faces. That's why this book was sealed until the time of the end. Right in their face, they go to Prophet Muhammad, Daniel 7, 25, Revelations 12 and 14. The times is talking about the Prophet Muhammad. Oh, what an awesome word. Oh, what an awesome word. Don't use that pain to make me grow. Ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. See the devil on me close. I done lived that way before. I can't go. I can't go. Looking back, it could have been different for sure. Been around that block for real. I done seen a lot for real. Could have felt them shots for real. Teddy bears on my block for real. That grace and mercy real. Like new birth for real. I'm from the cross to say the lost some streets they hurt for real. Don't use that pain. That pain to make me grow, make me grow. I done been through everything, but that grain protect my soul. Had to change that road. I done lost some homies to them deals and lost some to them poles. I could have been dead and gone. Grace and mercy held me strong. I done been down before. I done felt that rain, they helped me grow. I used to be doing the most. Till Christ, he came and saved my soul. Came out them streets for sure. Ain't no real love up in them streets for real. From A to Z, we did it all. Ain't nothing seen for real. Blood covered me from catching them shots. OG with a tweet for real. On the same Put that on the Ethernet. Don't use that pain to make me grow. Take your, take your Daniel 725, Revelation 1214, Seal Potion 66. 
and 77. Seal approach, 66 and 77. That hit you, follower of Christ? Yeah, it hit me too. He was called under the holy order of Mel Cheseldin. Hallelujah! Power God hit
Go use that pain to make me grow. Ooh, ooh. See the devil on me close. I done lived that way before. I can't fall. I can't go. Looking back, it could have been different for sure. Been around that block for real. I done seen a lot for real. Could have felt them shots for real. Teddy bears on my block for real. That grace and mercy real. Like new birth for real. I'm from the cross to say the lost some sweet they hurt for real. Go use that pain. Come on out of here, TJ. I get flashbacks when I hear this song. I've been shot at more than any man I ever know. Got one bullet wound right there in my face. Hallelujah. Could have been dead and gone, baby. I got a right to dance. You know, sometimes I love you. raised up. That was Mohammed. Put times with an S on the end. Then God brought Joseph Smith during the half of time. And then in still poetry 68, 58, he raised me up for the meridian of time. Joseph Smith came at the half of times. I came in the middle of the half of time. Christ coming at the end of the half of times. Go. 
to sit there. Come on. Sell brush. 29. Sell brush 29. And 23. And thus, it was throughout the earth between the times that the word of God was upon the earth, even between the times which John and Daniel have described in symbolism. Everybody look at that. Daniel 7, 25, Revelation 12, 14 is symbolism. Instead of mentioning their names, God used time, times, and a half of time, and the meridian of time. Seal potion. 29 and 23. And thus it was throughout the earth between the times that the word of God was upon the earth, even between the times which John and Daniel have described in symbolism. And when the gospel was upon the earth during the time and times and dividing of times through the ministration of the spirit and through the words of the holy prophets of God by the power of the holy order of the son of God by which they were called the prophet Muhammad was called after the holy order of Melchizedek and when we get home we gonna see our brother When we go home, we gonna see our brother. Son of God existed. And these are those things that nourish the woman in the wilderness, are in other words, the children of men, according to the words of John. Again, according to the words of John, time, times, 
and the dividing of time or the half of time is the same thing. It is the holy order of the Son of God that nourished the woman in the wilderness. Well, let me answer that with the Bible. Go to the book of Hebrews. Go to the book of Hebrews. Go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 8. Go to Hebrews. 8, 8. For finding fault with them, who oh, our ancestors. For finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Jonah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother say know the Lord for all shall know me from the least to the greatest for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Yes, I keep the holy days. Not because I got to. I keep them in remembrance of all of them talking about Jesus Christ. Every holy holiday is pointing the Israelites of old to Christ. It is the lower law. Animal sacrifice represents Christ. Christ was the last sacrifice. All of that was pointing to Christ. First fruits. <laughs> Christ was our first fruits from the grave. Happy birthday, Vaglicia. Happy birthday to Vaglicia. Happy birthday. Now, what else do I need to give you? Give me John 117. Give me John 117. And give me Psalm 119, 142. Much love to you too. Give me Psalms 119, 142. Let me teach a little. Psalms 119, 142. What we all got to understand is this. When Christ spoke, he, he was the word. He knew the whole Bible. He was the word. He didn't need to have the Bible in his hand. He was the word. And the father is the one that gave him what to say. He said, my doctrine is not mine, but my father's that sent me. So when you are in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you got to understand he's speaking from the foundation of the Old Testament. When you look at what you call the New Testament, how many times did he say, and it is written? Where is it written? In the Old Testament. What is he quoting? The Old Testament. The lower law, bringing you what? To a higher law. How you know? In the Old Testament, you had to commit physical adultery for it to be a sin. In the new, if you look at a woman to lust after her in your heart, you have committed adultery with her already. 
It's just a higher walk because now the walk is spiritual. So when the law changed, it changed in John 1 17. In Psalms 119, 142, it reads, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. So when you go to John 8, 32, when Christ said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, who the truth gonna make you free from? In John 8, 44, Christ told the Pharisees and the scribes, that they are of their father, the devil, that the, that the works of their father, they will do. He was what? Satan is what? The lawless one. So in John 1, 17, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So what did Christ bring? New, he brought grace. In Hebrews 8, 8 to 13, he told you he was going to put the law on our hearts and in our minds. And by the grace of God, we'll be able to do what our ancestors couldn't do because they didn't have that grace. We do. So when you got the knowledge of Psalms 119, 142, of what the law is, it is the truth. So now go back and read John 1 17 with the knowledge that Christ has. So now we're going to read it. The law was given by Moses, but grace and the law, according to Hebrews 8, 8 to 13, came by Jesus Christ. And where most Christians like to run is to Abraham. Well, go to Galatians 3, around 16. The gospel was taught to Abraham. I don't know why would people look back at the Old Testament. They can't see that the gospel was before Aaron. You got Genesis 14, 18. They breaking bread. Melchizedek breaking bread with Abraham. When you go to 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 4, everybody was baptized under the cloud and in the sea. That comes with the gospel. Christ came after the order of Melchizedek, Hebrews 7, 11 to 14. He did not come after the order of Aaron. He came after the order of Melchizedek. For the priesthood being changed, what need was there for a change also, in the law, what change was in the law? Grace came. The gospel was the first thing given to the children of Israel when they came out of ancient Egypt. In Deuteronomy 32, starting around verse 17, we rejected the gospel. Now you got to know the book of Jasher. Because in the book of Jasher, it tells you that Abraham grew up in the house of Noah and Shem for 39 years. Abraham knew and believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 11, 
when they, it's symbolism, when they took the bread and break it. He said, this represents my body that's going to be broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. He said, the cup represents my blood that's going to be shed for you. Take and drink. So when you go to Genesis 14, 18, Melchizedek is giving Abraham communion. It's symbolism. And when he had given thanks, he took it and said, take, eat, this is my body. What does the bread represent? His body. So all throughout the Old Testament, you see the Hebrews bringing forth bread and wine. All throughout the Old Testament, Jesus Christ is all over the Old Testament in symbolism. All right, go to 1 Samuel 16 and 20. Go to 1 Samuel 16 and 20. First Samuel sixteen and twenty. What? Everybody knew. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kit and sent them by David his son unto Saul. <laughs> what that represent? Symbolism. What did the bread represent? The body of Christ. What did the, the wine represent? His blood. What did the kid represent? <laughs> Who sent it? Jesse. Give me Isaiah 11 and 1. Jesse is recorded in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. Give me Isaiah 11 and 1. And there shall come forth the rod out of the stem of Jesse. Give me, give me Proverbs 9 and 5. Give me Proverbs 9 and 5. Remember Christ said, Lo, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Proverbs 9 and 5. Come, eat of my bread, and drink of my wine, which I have mingled. What? The body of Christ and the blood of Christ. It's symbolism. Hebrew letters are symbols. So the Hebrews hid things in their records in symbolism. So that if you read it, you wouldn't understand what you was reading. Now watch. Watch what happened when they take the bread and the wine wrong. Give me Proverbs 4.17. Proverbs 4.17. Watch God. God got mad. Now watch. That's why in 1 Corinthians 11, it said, don't take the body and the blood of Christ 
unworthily. You got to confess your sins first. Look, for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. What they doing? They taking the bread and the wine unworthily. See it? They have forgot what the symbolism represented. Now, when Christ came down, now, nah, not Christ. When Moses, just listen to me. When Moses went up to the mountain the first time, he had the two testimonies, not the Ten Commandments. Though the Ten Commandments are part of the two testimonies. When Moses came down, we was down there partying. Aaron had taken the gold and made two bull calves. They was down there worshiping other gods. Moses came down through the two testimonies, broke them, had to go back to God. When he went back to God, God gave him the Ten Commandments. The lower law. Before that, Exodus 19 and 6, we were supposed to be a kingdom of priests. Now, when you read about the priesthood in the book of Leviticus, were they serving God one day a week or was they serving God seven days a week? Under the Levitical priesthood, the priests were serving God in the temple seven days a week. So when you look at Exodus 19 and 6, we were supposed to be a kingdom of priests serving God seven days a week. But because we were down there serving other gods, Moses, through the two testimonies, went back to God, got the Ten Commandments, and God didn't give them that one day Sabbath. The Sabbath wasn't made for man. Man was made for the Sabbath. That's all they could serve God was one day a week. So God gave them one day a week. That's not what God wanted. That's why they were stoned to death when they broke the Sabbath. Because God was mad because they couldn't serve him for one day a week. We were supposed to be a kingdom of priests. Peter said it in the book of Peter. Peter said we was going to be a holy priesthood. Priests, again, is their job to serve God at the altar seven days a week. And in the book of Moses, it tells us that this same priesthood that was in the beginning was going to come back in the end.
Moses 6 and 7. Now this same priesthood, which was in the beginning, shall be in the end of the world also. That's Moses chapter 6 and verse 7. Let me slow down. I'm giving you the word of God as it is written. Only God's people can digest God's word as it is written. If you are a devil, you can't handle God's word. So you try to, you try to use philosophy and vain deceit to make God's word wrong. But in your ignorance, you arguing with God. I'm giving you God's word. I'm not giving you what I think or what I believe. So you arguing with God. <laughs> if I give you God's word and you don't agree with it, that's between you and God. And that's why he taught me precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So when I give it to you, if you cannot digest it, that's between you and God. But everything I'm showing you is written. <laughs> and I told you guys before and I'm going to say it again every other religion is God's other sheep Jesus Christ went all over the world a few thousand years ago and spread his gospel that's where you get religion today. Man turned it in to religion. But in every nation on the earth, you'll find the gospel. You'll find people, I don't care what belief they in, teaching, love your neighbor as yourself. You'll see the roots of the gospel in every religion on the earth. Jesus Christ did not give you religion. Satan did. Now, my prayer is this, that we recognize that some of the Muslims who keep the gospel are your brothers and sisters. Those other ones that are teaching hate are just like your Hebrew brothers and sisters on the street teaching hate. So in this Hebrew movement, you got those under the Melchizedek order teaching love, compassion, and charity to all nationalities. And then you got those of us in this Hebrew movement teaching hate, racism, and bigotry. It's the same thing with every other religion. In Islam, you got those that are teaching love, compassion, and charity. And 
then you have those that are teaching hate. A part of the same religion, but the ones that are teaching love, compassionate charity, Jesus Christ told us that we shall know them by their fruit. I don't care what religion you in. I'm going to know you by your fruit. And if you can't love everybody, you don't have the fruit of Christ, which is the fruit of the Spirit. The very first fruit of the spirit is love. So how are you hating? You don't have the spirit. And the Bible says those without the spirit of Christ are none of his. And those that are Christ have crucified their flesh and like passions thereof. You're not going into the kingdom on earth with hate. This is what you must understand. Christ has already given you time to get it right. Right now is your time. Right now is your time to get your heart right to submit to God in Christ in repentance and fasting and prayer so that you can what? Bear fruit. Christ said, every branch in me that beareth not forth fruit is good for nothing than to be cast out and trodden. You got to bear fruit. Galatians 5 and 19. I mean, excuse me, 5 and 22. Galatians 5 and 22. You got to bear fruit. You got to be just like that tree in Psalms 1, planted by the rivers of the water that bring forth this fruit in due season. What water is that? John 7, 38. If you believe on me, as the scriptures has said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You got to get the spirit of God to bear the fruit of God. And you only get the spirit of God through repentance and water baptism. Ask God for help. God, help me in the name of Christ to bear fruit. You got to give your heart to Christ. You got to give your heart to God. That's the only way you're going to change. If you're trying to do it on your own, it ain't going to work. You got to give your heart to God in Christ. You got to submit so that you can be converted. And become as a little child. And when you become as a little child, God will teach you. God will train you. The Holy Ghost will tell you, shut up. <laughs> you know you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Apologize. 
People ask me how the Holy Ghost talk. Well, to a stiff neck, hard-hearted people, how you think she talk? Shut up. You know you shouldn't be talking like that. Apologize. I come on here and people get me mad. I get to cussing. I, 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 fast as I start cussing, I hear it in my head. Shut up. Stop that. I, God forgive me. Somebody came on here and called me the wrong word. God forgive me. Might have been one of my children behind that trash can on that old mattress. in that alley. <laughs> Child on here cussing me out. People, trolls be coming on here cussing me out. I say to myself, Lord, that might be one of my illegitimate children in the alley that night when we was doing crack cocaine behind that trash can. And, and, I, and I accidentally started having sex with that woman on that dirty mattress. That might be my child, huh? Named Seely Prostopedia. You guys, forgive me. I'm crazy as hell sometimes. Forgive me. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on my soul. I know I'm crazy, God. Lord, have mercy. You made me like this. Why you do it? Why you make me like this? God, forgive me. I'm trying to teach you guys you got to be real with God God don't want no phony people he wants you to be real you went to that grocery store and you barely made it out and you got to the car and you felt like when you was in the grocery store you was going to kick that ladies behind that was in front of you you wanted to lay hands and then you go to the car and you sit in the car and you act like that just didn't happen not me I get in the car I said, oh my God, I almost went to jail. I wanted to sock that dude right in his throat. I wanted to pick him up off the ground and body slam him on his head. God, I know you've seen all that. I ain't trying to hide nothing from you. God, forgive me. I ain't can't let none of that come in my heart. Forgive me, God, for thinking like that. In the name of Jesus, amen. That's how I walk with God. I'm an open book to God. God, you know I want to slap the hell out of that woman. Didn't want to put my money back in my hand at the cash register. She threw it down on the thing. God, I wanted to grab her nappy head, drag her behind off that damn register, and beat the hell out of her. God, I got to stay home for a couple of days. I ain't got no bill money. I'm trying to teach you guys how to walk with God. Get that Christian crap out of you. What did Jabez pray? Everybody used to talk about the prayer of Jabez, but nobody understood what Jabez said. Jabez went to God. He said, God, I need more land. I need you to increase my coast. And God, if you don't do it, I'm gonna have to shed blood. After he got done with that prayer, God said, well said. Because you was honest, I'm gonna give you more land. He told God, I'm gonna take it by force if you can't give it to me. And God said, man, that was a good prayer. Why? He was honest. You got to learn to be honest with God. That's all he want. He wants you to be honest. Be like, most high, 
Thank you for getting me through this day. Back in the days, Shana, people used to say to me, people used to say to me, homie, you doing all right? People used to say that to me. You doing all right? I used to say it back to them. You see me, don't you? I used to say, you see me, don't you? And some of them used to say, what that mean? And I used to say, when you don't see me, I'm not doing all right because I'm in prison. So if you see me on the streets, in public, I'm doing all right. <laughs> and that's what I used to say. When you don't see me for a year or two, they know I'm back in prison and I'm not doing that good. Come on out of here. Everybody put a number 10 in here if you understood this lesson. If you can see it. Put a number 10 in here if you can see that Christ told Muhammad it was okay for the Muslims to call God Allah. Can you see it? So Christ and God are the founders of what you call Islam. Are people misusing it? Yeah. Are, did they misuse Christianity? Yeah. No doubt. They are misusing it. So that's why I tell all my Islamic brothers and sisters, say a prayer for me and we'll say one for you because we all follow the same God. What's up, Yasmin? We all follow the same God. Providence is booked up. And I want everybody to listen to me. When the Providence talks to you, she's going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Do you hear me? She's going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. So don't talk to the providence if you want her to tell you what you want to hear. That's not her job. Her job is to tell you what you need to hear. Say said he needed that. I stand behind her 1,000%. A lot of you guys, you don't know 
but let me give you a testimony. She was part of a Mexican church. I was at my job and somebody told her that there is a real prophet on this mountain. When she got off of work, she came to my job. She walked up to me, looked at me, and God would not allow her to say who I was. Completely. God blinded her. So she couldn't say who I was. She went home and prayed. And God told her who I was. And then God sent her to me to help me in this ministry. Everything that she does in giving people prophetic words, I used to do that. That was my job when I was in the Christian church. I would tell you your whole life. We've been operating in the gifts for a long time. I'll give you a testimony. I was visiting because back then I had an interpreter of Spanish. So God was using me in the, in the Mexican churches. I had an interpreter. I had a woman that was Mexican who used to interpret for me. We was having a revival. And a lot of people from Mexico came over to the revival. And while I was preaching, there was a woman sitting on the front row And God showed me she had a son. And the son was heavy on her heart. And he was in the world. When I looked at the woman, I stopped service. I told the woman to stand up. I said, ma'am, do you have a son? I can't remember his name now, but God gave me his name. I said, ma'am, do you have a son named such and such? She started screaming and hollering. I said, well, ma'am, your son right now is in a church at an altar and he is crying and the preacher is praying for him and I said does anyone here have a phone and the mama said yes and the mama dialed the number when the mama dialed the number the pastor of the church who was praying for that son answered the phone and the woman said is my son there and the pastor said he's at the altar and he's being delivered <laughs> the 
the Spirit of God fell in the church. Peter was running out the church. <laughs> That's how good I was. But now I'm going to tell you what made me stop. Now I'm going to tell you what made me stop. I used to evangelize all over Mexico. And what made me stop is that when young ladies would come and stand in front of me for prayer. God would tell me she's been molested. She's been raped. And I would whisper into their ears that God just told me that your uncle raped you when you was five years old. And that spirit will come off of them and God would heal them. But it became too much for me. And I would ask God to please stop showing me all of these young girls and young boys that have been molested and raped. So that made me stop. So now I just look at you. I know what you're going through. I just pray for you. Nobody can come in my presence and I don't know everything. I know everything. That's in the Bible. Y'all know that's in the Bible? Let me show you what the providence is doing. Let me explain it to you guys. Using the Bible. In the first Corinthians, chapter 14, first Corinthians, chapter 14, start at verse. 24. This, I want to give a shout out to Anav. This is what we're going to start doing at the church here every Shabbat. So everybody that's part of this ministry, read 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 24. But if all prophesied and there come in one that believeth not, are one unlearned. He is convinced of all. He is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his faith, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. This is the fivefold gift ministry. This is the church. And we're giving a shout out to Anah because God used Anah to set the pattern that we will follow from now on. This is how the church is supposed to operate.
This is a gift given to certain people to be able to tell you the secrets of your heart. But a lot of you, because you don't know this is part of the fivefold gift ministry, you get mad when you're supposed to give glory to God. Because God told you something that was bothering God. So God used a prophet to tell you what's bothering him so that you can work on what you need to work on. Because in our minds, the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So in our own eyes, we write, we ready for heaven. But in God's eyes, God's saying you're not ready. So I'm gonna help you get ready. So I'm gonna tell you some things that you need to know so you can fix it, not get mad. Marco, you are very, very intelligent. Marco said, I know I'm not ready. Well, guess what, Marco? I'm the last prophet, and I say that all the time. When I go in prayer, I say, God, help me. I don't want to go to hell. And I used to say, and this is what the providence deal with. I used to say, God, if I spoke anything that was not you, I ask you to forgive me because I'm a baby prophet and I'm still learning. And I used to do that after every church service because Satan comes and attacks the woman of God for giving you that word. Satan will come, and boy, he come like a Mack truck. He'll be hitting you in your head. You'll be going home. That wasn't God, that was you. That was you. Stop doing that. Don't do that no more. Why are you doing that? Don't be saying that. You shouldn't be saying that. Boy, you talking about a war. So after every church service, I would say that. And then after about five years, I said it, and God told me to shut up. <laughs> Isaiah 58 and 1. Somebody give him Isaiah 58 and 1. So after about five years, I was down doing that after a service, and I heard God say, shut up, you ain't a baby no more. <laughs> Stop using that as an excuse. So when you operate in the prophetic, you are at war with Satan. And this is a fivefold gift ministry. That's why you can come on this internet and feel the presence of God. fivefold gift in this ministry is the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, and the evangelist. All of them. Receive it. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will be 
made available to your children. and lies, not to be still. That's when you love him. When you stop
Can you say that? Can you say that? That when he came into your life, he changed your life. He cleaned you up from the inside out. Come with Jesus.
Somebody asked me just now, what's my favorite scripture in the whole Bible? I don't have a favorite scripture, but I got a, I got a favorite story. Go. Go to uh, Second Kings. Go to Second Kings. Chapter 6. Second Kings. Chapter 6. Somebody asked me, what's my favorite story? All right, book in the Bible. I'm going to read it for you. What's up, says? I like to be on that TikTok with you guys, but I be too tired. So give me, be well, my love. Let me read. the best story to me in the Bible. Numbers, Second Kings, chapter six, starting at verse one. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elijah, Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. The other prophets said to Elijah, is calling on your life is too straight for us. Because God had gave great grace to Elijah. Elijah was a holy man. Able to walk that line seven days a week. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was failing, a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, I lost master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down the stick and cast it in thither. And the iron did swim. Therefore he said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. Then the king of Syria, here go my story. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel 
and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be thy my cap. And the man of God said unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel said to the place with which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore, the heart of the king of Assyria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Well, you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel. And one of his servants said, None, my lord. O king, but Elijah, O king, but Elijah, the prophet that is in Israel, telling the king of Israel, the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Grace and mercy real, like new birth for real. 
come from the cross to say the lost some sweet, they hurt for real. Don't use that pain. God told Ezekiel, hold on. Watch. They asked the question. Give me Ezekiel 33 and 30. Ezekiel 33 and 30. See that 
brother Malachi. You don't be worried whether or not people are going to do it or not. That's not your business. Just preach the word in season and out of season. Don't get caught up in whether or not they're going to keep the commandments and follow God or not. No, baby. The people are going to come to you and you're gonna sound like one that's a very lovely song. They gonna hear what you tell them and they not gonna do nothing you say. against them by the walls and in the doors of the houses and speak one to another every one to his brother say come I pray you and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord and they come unto thee as the people cometh and they sit before they as my people and they hear thy words but they will not do them for with their mouth they show much love but their heart goeth after their covetousness and lo thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument for they hear thy words but they do them not and when this cometh to pass lo it will come then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them Go to 1 Corinthians 14 and 32. First Corinthians 14 and 32. Start at 27. If any man spake in an unknown tongue, talking about in another language, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. 
But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophet speak to our three and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For you may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Same spirit. So what they going to be screaming? The same thing. Go to Jeremiah 23. And 20. Let's start at 22. Jeremiah 23 and 22. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Stop. Jeremiah 23 and 22 is the office of the prophets. All of the prophets' jobs is to scream and holler repentance and baptism. All of them. If anybody calling themselves a prophet and they not teaching repentance and water baptism, they not sent from God. That's right, Tavon, Tavon, Tavon. Give me Amos 2 and 11. Give me Amos 2 and 11. Let's identify the nationality of the prophets. And I raised up of your sons for prophets and your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O you children of Israel, says the Lord, who the prophets, who did God say he raised up for prophets? children of Israel. Why? Go to Romans chapter 3. Go to Romans. Chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then hath the children of Israel? It say Jew right there. Just put children of Israel. At one time in history, only Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were called Jews. 
But later on in history, all 12 tribes became known as Jews. The other word are the children of Israel. Yes, a Gentile in this ministry can have the spirit of prophecy because you're sitting under me. Everybody that's sitting under me, every gift, every talent that's in my life, if you humble yourself, seek God and pray, and live right, God will put it in your life. He already doing it. All of you that been delivered, all of you that get the Holy Spirit coming on you, while I'm teaching, that's the spirit of revelation. That's the anointing that's on this ministry. That's on my life as the head of this ministry. It's coming on you. We make apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. Just like Paul took Timothy, called him his spiritual son. He raised up Timothy. Timothy's father was a Greek and his mother was a Jewish. And Timothy became a bishop, but he had to first learn from Paul. Paul trained Timothy. What advantage? We're going to just put children of Israel here because that's what should be here. What advantage then? Has the children of Israel, or what prophet is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Go to Psalms 147 19 and 20. What advantage? Then has the children of Israel chiefly every way because that unto them were given the oracles of God. Nineteen and twenty, he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments on the Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Who he show his word to? The children of Israel. Peace. why the Negro is hated. What I'm showing you right now is why you hate it. This is why you hate it. This is why all the other nations hate you. Because that unto you were committed the oracles of God. And the other nations are mad at that. That's why they hate you. That's why. That's why they teach that lie. But if you go get the book of Jasher, if you go get the book of Jasher, Shalom, Jess, if you go get This book, it 
it tells you the story. When God gave Shem his land, Ham his land, and Japheth his land, and God told the brothers never to take each other's land. In this book, Japheth got envious of the land of Ham and Shem. And it became a curse to Japheth. So Japheth started taking all of the lands of their brothers. So now Japheth is living, doing exactly what God said. That's right. That's right, Kevin. Japheth, that he would also dwell in the tents of Shem. I live in the tents of Shem. That's what he doing. It's in Jubilees too. Joseph's whole life was a metaphor for the tribe of Ephraim and Manasseh and the other eight tribes. Joseph's whole life was a metaphor for what would happen to the ten tribes. Joseph went to prison. Joseph had to fight off lust. I'm going to break it down for you. Joseph had to fight off lust. And he defeated it. Joseph then went to prison. In prison, God elevated Joseph. When Joseph came out of prison, Joseph was elevated in the kingdom of the Gentiles. Joseph had to learn to respect Egyptian worship and Egyptian gods while he lived in Egypt. While he served his God, he lived among the Gentiles. He became CEO <laughs> as a Hebrew Israelite he was elevated to CEO of the Gentiles he respected the Gentiles he worked among the Gentiles He became so loved among the Gentiles that God put it on the priest of An's heart to
to give Joseph his Egyptian daughter. You know she was fine, right? <laughs> this with El you kick in. You know she was 34, 24, 34, baby. You know she was fine. Joseph wasn't going to take no ugly mule. Come out of here. He wasn't going to satisfy with nothing ugly. He would have been like, no, nah, priest. No, nah, I'm good. I'm good. You know, the priest would have kept on, come on, take my daughter. No, I'm good. You know, king, I don't like women right now. I don't, I don't like women right now. I, I'm going to stay single. So you know she was fine. Joseph, Joseph said, okay, I'll take that fine Egyptian. She got pregnant. Had Manasseh. She got pregnant again and had Ephraim. A Gentile. Don't we look good today? And this is where El Dayil come in again. Don't we look good today? Talking about mix. My hello! Patriarch mother was full-blooded Egyptian. Joseph was full-blooded Hebrew. You want to know what kind of child come out looking like? Look at us. Negro, we look good. Pat yourself on the back. So after Joseph, have Ephraim and Manasseh in Egypt, he teaching his sons about his God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He teaching his sons about the God that he got a relationship with. God's talking to Joseph. Oh, I'm going somewhere. God is communicating with Joseph one on one. The prophetic ministry was on Joseph. Hello! I'm going to show you why they, why they tried to keep us down. you call yourself Judah. They don't care if you call yourself by the name of the other tribes. It was Ephraim and Manasseh. They had to make sure never come back. Because when Joseph took Ephraim and Manasseh to Jacob to get the, patri the, the huh? patriarchal blessing. In the Hebrew culture, there is no matriarchal blessing. It's patriarchal. Men, said a man, Numbers 23, 16, set a man over the congregation of the Lord. So when he took the boys to Jacob, Jacob didn't say to Joseph, why you got these mixed children? 
Don't you know you were never supposed to mix with the Egyptians? He took the children to Joseph, Jacob. When he took the children to Jacob, Jacob was blind. Jacob took his hand and put it on Ephraim. And Joseph said, not so, Father, Manasseh is the oldest one. And Jacob said, he shall become a great nation. But this blessing is going on the head of the tribe of Ephraim. And he blessed Ephraim. And then he blessed Manasseh. And the 10 tribes were backslidden a few thousand, a few thousand years before Judah, Benjamin and Levi. In Jeremiah 23, he says, woe unto the crowd of the pride of the drunkards of Ephraim. In the book of Hosea, he cussing us out. Ephraim got a drinking problem. So Ephraim got to have discipline. So when you go to your book of Hosea, God is sending the word by the mouth of the prophet Hosea to the 10 tribes. So everywhere in your Bible where you see Judah, always see Benjamin and Levi. Everywhere you see in Ephraim, always see Manasseh, Asher, and Gad, Issachar, and the rest of them. Because Ephraim was the head tribe of the ten tribes. They were supposed to be the law keepers. So God came to Joseph while he was in Egypt. And told Joseph that a famine was coming. Joseph not only saved Egypt, he saved Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Jacob, and the rest of his brothers. When Joseph was given the dream by God, what made his brothers sell it? Remember, Joseph had the dream where the moon and the sun paid homage to him. And Judah and Gad got mad and said, oh, well, you think we gonna bow down to you too? And they sold Joseph in the ancient Egypt.
Well, guess what? They bowed down. Because they had to go to Egypt to survive the famine. And when they went to Egypt to survive the famine, Jacob and his sons bowed down to Joseph. the tribe that God would raise up to bring all of the other tribes back. What? In Ezekiel 37. In Ezekiel 37, you got two sticks. The stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the stick of Judah which is Benjamin and Levi. Those are the two records. When do we come back together? After we get the knowledge of the Book of Mormon and we make them one stick. Then in Ezekiel 37, we all come back because now we have knowledge and we have our records back and when we put them back they became one in God's hand again this is spiritual you're being gathered by the Holy Spirit You're being gathered by the Holy Spirit. A lot of us went to prison. A lot of us work among the Gentiles. Me, myself, I had great favor at Walmart. I was in upper management for Walmart and I was making bringing home big money. I was being groomed to become a store manager or a district manager before I left Walmart. Then, from Walmart, I became the manager of a thrift store for the Roman Catholic Church. And God lifted me up with favor among the Catholics. Never had no problem working with the Gentiles. And here we are today. And if it be God's will, tomorrow we'll go in to the sealed book and we will show you prophecy being fulfilled. If it's the Lord's will, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow. We're going to go into prophecy and I'm going to show you where God 
chose Ephraim in the last days to do exactly what we doing right now. We're going to use prophecy. All right, much love, Kennard. Keep your eye on New, New York Preppers channel. I don't, I didn't, don't subscribe to him because he's crazy as hell. But he will keep you up to date on nuclear activity within the United States of America. New York Prepper. Like I said, to me, he crazy as hell. I don't subscribe to his wacky beliefs. But he will keep you up to date on the nuclear situation that's going on in America. No. Lewis, I, no, no, I'm, I'm good. I had to leave Lewis alone. I had to leave Lewis alone. Lewis was going to get me and my wife in trouble. So we had to leave Lewis alone. You know you ain't supposed to be mocking people. But every damn time I turn on Lewis, all I hear is, welcome to the Grand Supreme New Channel. Welcome to the Grand Supreme New Channel. And every time I hear that, I start, I start laughing sometimes. And God, forgive me. Forgive me, God. I got to stop listening to this boy. This boy make me, boy, I be, I, I, I'm a Negro. I laugh at everything. That Negro be having me. I be like, damn, change it up. Say something else. Welcome to the Grand Supreme New Day. Oh, shit. Now I got going to get me in trouble with God. God forgive me. Damn boy making me, making me talk like him. I love him. He my brother. But damn it, I can't hear you talking like that all the time without me saying something. You come around me talking like that. I love you and respect you, but I'm going to get a laugh. Be all up in your cooler. What happened? What, what happened when you was young? Well, when I was young, I, I was kind of deaf. Well, boy, come over here. Let me put some anointing oil on your ears. Let me see if we can clear that up right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Get off his tongue, devil. Loose that tongue. <laughs> I love you, Lewis. If you all here watching, I love you, brother. I love you. I'm just crazy as hell. You come around me like that, I always got to ask. I'm old school. What happened? What happened? Mama mama dropped you on your head? When, what happened? Tell me the story. I want to know. <laughs> Tell me. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. You know, I'm, I'm 60 years old now, Kimberly. I can do like mama and them used to do us. Come on over here and sit down, baby, and talk to me. Come, come on over here, sit down over here, and then you guys be shaking your head. Damn it, they go, they go, mom, they go, they go, grandma again. Grandma be tripping. Damn, every time we bring somebody over to the house, she always checking up inside their head. Tell her, what's going on? What coming over here, baby? Sit down. Who, who your mama? <laughs> Who your mama? And then they tell her they mama name. Who your daddy? And they tell her they daddy name. Will. Your dad. 
Your daddy will? Ah, oh, that, that nigga ain't no, that, that, that boy ain't no damn good. Your daddy wasn't no damn good. But I'm glad that you here. He, he had you. All right. I'll be cooking dinner a little bit later on. You guys go on in there and play. I'll put something on the stove for you. <laughs> You ain't walking up in grandma's house and she don't know who the hell you are. Grandma gonna be like, who is that? Oh, this is my friend Joey. Come here, Joey. Come over here, Joey. Wait, where, where you live at? Oh, I live down the road down there, Miss Hattie. I live down the road. Where at? How long you been here? Oh, we been here. We been here for about 30 some years. You know my mama. What's my mama? What's your mama name? My now mama name is Betty Smith. Oh, yeah, I know your mama. All right, go on, go on, play. Ain't bringing no strangers up in mama house. You ain't ain't happening. You guys today, your your kids bringing children home. You don't even know who the hell they are. You don't even know what spirit on them. You supposed to be spirit checking. Yeah, we're going to pray for that friend of yours right there. That friend right there kind of something wrong. It, something's off. Yeah, we're going to pray for that child right there. Yeah, he, you can bring him over to the house, but we're going to keep him in prayer. Checking. Spirit checking. Letting them damn wicked children come in my house. Ain't no wicked children coming in here, baby. Everybody put a number five in here if you run your house like mama used to run her house. Put a number five in here if you run your house like mama ran her house. Put a number five in here. <laughs> Come out here. Talking about you 16. You 16 and 17, you can have sex, you can get married, damn it. Ain't gonna be no damn excuse. Oh, but they only 16 and 17. I don't give a damn. If they humping, they getting married. Give a damn? Give a damn if they 15. I don't wanna hear that crap. I don't wanna hear it. Oh, I mean, they still young. Oh, like hell, they, you getting married. Somebody give me that damn broom. Throw that damn broom on the ground. Jump that damn broom right now. We ain't having no damn fornication in my house. My mama used to say, hey, hell no. You ain't bringing no girl in my house till you marry. You marry? You can bring her over a few times, but we working on marriage. Oh, they too young. I don't want to hear that crap. They too young. They might get divorced. You ain't got that much damn time to get divorced. Where, where you living at? Clock ticking. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. Get them babies out of sin now. Tick, tock. Ain't going to be no year, two years from now. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Tick tock talking about because you got married when you were 17, got knots put on your head, and got divorced when you was 19. Don't put that on them. We good using our experiences and then putting it on our children. But I don't think she should get married. Well, what you think she should be a hope? Go on, baby, be a hoe for four years. What? Don't bring that crap around Elder High Hill. I be all up in they damn Kool-Aid. You married? Well, you stay out there on the front porch. Be no fornication in here. Period. Because they're talking about they 16. 
They know how to kick their drop their drawers off, don't they? That make you grown to me. I, I, I had two jobs at 16 and was in the world. So don't be telling me, oh, they only 16, 17. Baby, if she know how to take her drawers off and know how to get into bed with another young man, they old enough to get married. I don't give a damn what she said. You ain't coming over here fornicating. Get out of here, you little fornicator. Christ said, let it not be named once among you as becoming saints. You done became a saint. You can't even let it be named among you. What? Fornication? Get out of here. Come out of here. Don't be afraid to say what I say. I've been married two, th three times. This is my third time. Come out of here. Got married the first time. Went to hell. Didn't work. Didn't have God. Just married because of looks. She was fine. Hello, that's what you Negroes did. You got married the first time when you was young because she was fine, or he was fine. You didn't get married because of God. You got married because of lust. Couldn't keep your hands off each other. Come out of here. As soon as that lust wore off, as soon as that lust demon left, Oh, no, hell no, started fighting, cussing each other out, mad at each other all the time. Lust demon gone. Then you, then you got out there, you wasn't going to get married again. Satan was laughing. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to get her down to the club tonight. And I got this dude over there, he got the right cologne on. She, he know it's she. I'm gonna put the right cologne on this dude. I'm gonna put the right cologne on him. I'm gonna put the right pants on him, the right shoes. I'm gonna even have his hair the way she like his hair. Satan, hook him up. You go down there to that club, you be like, oh my God. He's everything I've been looking for, girl. First few months, wonderful, absolutely wonderful, wonderful. Can't keep your hands off each other, just full of lust, screaming and humping all over the house like two, two bunny rabbits, just doing it all over everywhere, just, oh my God, pulling over at night in the car, backseat, everywhere. Then the lust demon leave. Then you wake up one day. Why you leave that sock on the floor? Why you don't put the toilet seat back down? Now you mad. Now you looking for a way out. <laughs> why you don't? Why? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't like you no more. I don't like you either. Why don't you get out? Why don't you get out? I'm done. Let's demon gone. <laughs> Lust demon go. Now you hate each other. Can't stand each other. I wish he just leave. Get the hell out of here. Because you couldn't tell the difference between love and lust. Love is friendship. You got to become friends. If you can't become friends first, ain't no way in hell you're going to become good lovers. Sorry, 
I'm sorry, I'm teaching right now. Get the kids out of here. If you can't be friends, ain't no way in hell your marriage is gonna last because of sex. Ain't no way in hell. Sex don't make marriages long last. Last long, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, he said the Ghostbusters. <laughs> so, in Hollywood, everybody get married because of the lust demon. And when the lust wear off, the marriage wear off. So you got to become friends first. You can't base your marriage off of every time you get an orgasm. Oh, I'm happy because I just got an orgasm. That's what make you happy? Then we in trouble. We in trouble. The marriage already in trouble. It's in trouble. Because the lust gonna wear off of him or either her. I don't feel like it. Why not? I don't feel like it. Why not? Then you break up, and then here come the lust demon again. Some people never figure this out. <laughs> then here come the lust demon again. <laughs> now the lust demon got you married, and you looking at another man. That's all it is, the lust demon. And the lust demon love to make you think, the grass is greener on the other side. Oh, look, the grass is greener over there. And you're over there looking. That grass, that grass be looking good, don't it, Melinda? That grass on the other side, Satan be hooking that grass up. That grass don't need to be cut. That grass don't need to be edged. That grass on the other side, Satan be making that grass look like that damn apple in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Until you get over there. <laughs> and then when you get over there, where that you thought that grass was greener on the other side, you get over there. And then you find out that that grass was worse than the grass that you already had. <laughs> You look up and that green grass done turned brown. <laughs> and then you realize all he wanted was a hump. One hump. I'm sorry, baby. Jezebel ain't no joke. That's how Jezebel tear up marriages. They see a ring on your hand and that's when they get horny. Jezebel see a wedding ring on your finger. She get horny as hell. He get horny as hell, cause they see you married. Now they coming after you to destroy your marriage. And because you got an ego, you think it's because you look good. That what you think. Oh, he really like me. No, he don't baby. He only like that ring on your finger. He know you married. So he want to destroy your marriage. So sit your butt down, put on some baggy pants when you go to work. Stop walking around that job, doing the left cheek, right cheek. That's your husband's butt. Should no other man see that butt but your husband. I'm talking to somebody right now. I'm all up in somebody mail. There's a guy on your job trying to hit on you. It's Satan. Satan real busy on them jobs right now.
got all that spirit on them. They saying all the right things. Oh, oh yes, they are. They on that devil on them jobs right now. Woo! Make you happy to go to work. Hubs is saying, why are you going to work 30 minutes earlier today? Well, I just thought I'd get there. I got a lot of work to do. No, you don't. You ain't sin. If you lusting after another man, you committing adultery already with him in your heart. If you lusting, after another woman, you are in adultery. They call them work wives and work husbands. The devil is a liar. Ain't calling no damn body no work wife and no work husband. The devil is a liar. Oh, that's a trap right there. The power of life and death is in the mouth. So now he got you speaking that lie. Oh, it's just my work wife. No, your work whore. You guys better stop playing. Better call it, yeah, it's a trap. You better call it like mama call it. A hoe is a hoe. If they know you married and they flirting with you, that is a whore. Might be a good looking whore, but still a whore. Got that Jezebel spirit on him. Don't let nobody steal your crown. Oh, no. I don't know. I'm 60 years old now. How long it? I don't know. What, three minutes? <laughs> you going to give up? You've been at this ministry since 2019. Five years. You're going to give up five years of serving God for five minutes. <laughs> you going to give up serving God for five years for five minutes. Or less. I say three minutes. I know you work hard under the surface. I see your purpose. Ain't nobody says Satan is fair. Satan ain't fair. Satan cold blooded. He'll get you into a sexual affair that only lasts what two minutes. Melvin said two good exciting minutes, and you gave up five years. Now, if you got the Holy Ghost, you are psychologically destroyed. Do you know the sensation and the feeling that comes after committing a sin like that? Do you know how messed up you will be? Manello said a cold game. Cold. Have you cried for days? Have you spiritually messed up for weeks? Baby, you'll be asking God for forgiveness every day for that one sin until Christ returns. Satan will keep that sin on your mind. 24-7. You won't be able to shake that sin right now, baby. You'll be like King David. My sins are forever before my face. Oh, he was messed up. King David said, no matter what I do, I have flashbacks of what I did. And I messed up. Can you imagine? 
King David after he killed Uriah the Hittite and stole his wife. And God sent Nathan the prophet. And he fell out in Psalms 51. He had to live with that blood the rest of his life. I'm talking about when you really serve in God. And you mess up. It will destroy you. If you ain't if you ain't careful. That's why I stay away from situations that lead to sin. Let me help somebody before I say goodbye. See yourself being set up. You done came out of the world. You being separate. You serving God. Here come the smooth move. Satan setting you up. I know I look good. Thank you for the compliment. 60 years old, baby. 60 years old, black don't crack and brown don't give. No. Look at that real good. Look at that real good. You don't see no bunch of wrinkles around my mouth. You don't see no bunch of wrinkles around my eyelids. I don't look like I'm 60 years old, but I sure run into people that's 50 years old that look like they 90 years old. Baby, brown don't crack. You hear me, Virginia Carter? That's why they mad at you. You're walking down the street, going to the grocery store at 70 years old, looking like 50. On the and everybody else walking around looking like they 45 looking like 65 I'll be jealous too baby I am 60 I'll be 61 this month. Be 61 this month, baby. Come on out of here. They proper lied. They said I'd be dead before I was 18. They said I'd be dead before I was 19. They said I would be dead before I was 21. They said I'd be dead before I was 25. They proper lie. How many of you guys did they proper lie on? How many people in your family said you was gonna die young? Put a number five in here. Put a number five in here if they proper lie and God kept you still alive today. Look at Malachi. Still here. Poet House, still here. Preston, still here. The family was hating, wasn't they? Wasn't they hating? Oh, she be dead before she's 25. Look at you. God said, hell no. God shot down that word curse. God said, throw that word curse in the trash. They gonna be here until Christ come. Come on out of here. Lay down in burdens. I know you're working hard. Still 
still here, baby. Still here. Grew up in the ghetto. Survived the ghetto. How many people on here survived the ghetto? Put a number five in here if you survived the ghetto. If you grew up in the ghetto. What Ice Cube said back in the days, he said, if you ain't never been to Compton, don't come to Compton. If you never been to Watts, California, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, please stay out of Watts, California. Coming out of here, New Orleans, Seven Wolf. Coming, hey! Now, we ain't leaving our home. This is our home. Our ancestors are buried here. We not leaving America. We got dead soldiers buried all over America. It's our honor to die in the land of our ancestors. Told somebody that the other day. I'm dying in the land of my ancestors. I'm not going to die in a foreign land. I want everybody on here to hear me. All these Negroes leaving this land, they gonna die in a foreign land. I'm gonna die in the land of my ancestors. It's gonna be a wonderful day if I gotta lay down. Lay me down in the land of my ancestors. All our ancestors buried all over America. We got people with no loyalty to their ancestors. No loyalty at all to their ancestors. Getting up and running. We ain't running nowhere. Come out here. Pray that the bombs fall tonight. Destruction for some is our redemption. You need to understand that. What's destruction to the Gentiles is our freedom. We ain't going nowhere. Devil is a liar. Why everybody scared to die? Let me ask that question. Satan be using that one, don't he? Satan be using that fear of death to get you to do things that you would norm not do. But when you got the spirit of Elijah, what you gonna send me home? You gonna send me to Christ? Where I can go drink some wine with Peter, Paul? You gonna send me where? Much love and much respect. Make it, I promise, I promise. Listen, I would. 
Get your popcorn and get your peanuts. Get your popcorn and get your peanuts. Like I said earlier, the last two Sabbaths has been war. You live it in April. April is the month of what? War. Is anybody listening to me? April is the month of war. So look, you guys, close your door, Aaron. Close your door, Aaron. And let the deaf angel pass. Keep everybody in prayer. Pray for everybody in the East. Sunni, Shia, Palestinians. Pray for all of them. The Turks. Pray. For everybody in the East. And we pray that our brothers and sisters in the East pray for us. Right now, the most powerful weapon on earth is your prayer. You guys already know in the third testament that volcano is the sign of God's judgment in the earth so that volcano that exploded to life in Indonesia is God signaling to the people of the earth that his judgment is here that volcano did what volcanoes are supposed to do explode to life not what we used to not what we used to a river in Iran just turned to blood Dubai is flooded. And I'm praying that God drop nukes on all of the races. I'm praying, praying that God's nukes fall first on the races. The black races, the white races, the Japanese races, the Chinese races, the Arab races. I'm praying to God that they go first. Everybody on this earth that hate one another. I'm praying to God that he get rid of them first. All of them. We teach the Quran, the Bible, the sealed portion, doctrines and covenants, the sealed book, the apocrypha, the book of Enoch, the book of Jasher, and the book of Enoch. All of the ancient records of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We teach. And you running out of time. The clock is ticking. Repent and be baptized because America 
is going to war with Russia, China, and Iran, and North Korea, and South Africa. Iran is not alone. All of them have supersonic missiles. Never mind. I can't think of no other way to leave Earth than to die in a supersonic missile explosion. Boy, you get out of here fast, won't you? You get out of here quick, won't you? <laughs> it ain't like the old day where you get stabbed with a knife a sword and you bleed to death while you're laying on the ground. That's a slow death. Everything that's going to happen this time is going to be quick. Here one second, gone the next. <laughs> where he at? Oh, he at the gates. <laughs> he at the gates. <laughs> he at the gates. You're going to be gone that fast, baby. Pay y'all, go! Just put your hands in the air like you just don't care. You're going to be out of here so fast you ain't going to know what hit you. Ain't nothing to be afraid of. We're going home. No. I didn't share it. I had a dream. A foe, 24 24. And when I woke up, I remember that number was in the movie of Eli. Ain't nothing to be afraid of, brothers and sisters. I love you guys. Five hours again. We just did five hours again. Much love, much respect. That's right, Jason. I'll be praying for all of you guys. Sophia, much love. Somebody give me Hosea 4 and 6. Thank you for subscribing. If you subscribe, you one of the elect. If you can come on this channel and you understand everything I've been teaching and it gravitated to your spirit, the Bible says that the spirit beareth witness. So if your spirit beareth witness today with everything that I've been teaching and saying, you are one of God's elect. Hosea 4 and 6. Let's see what God says. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee from being kings and priests unto me. Hosea 4 and 6. That's why we're going to die. Because of a lack of knowledge. We come on this channel, Daniel 12, 4, to give you knowledge. To answer every question. That's what I might do tomorrow. Answer questions. With the word of God. So Daniel... 12-4, your precept is Hosea 4-6. So we have taught thee the inspired message. See, it's inspired. 
That's what the King James Version was supposed to be. Inspired. Everything we read supposed to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. So we have taught thee the inspired message. Follow the ways of Abraham. Put that back up again. Follow the ways of Abraham. The truth in faith. And, and he joined not God with Allah. Stop. That's a now 123. Put that back up again. Anah 123 out of the Quran goes with Galatians chapter 3 where Abraham was taught the gospel. Follow the ways of Abraham. Okay? Now go to Galatians chapter 3. Go to Galatians chapter 3. I think you start at around verse 16, 17, 18, where it shows you the way of Abraham. There you go. Is it three and what? Eight? So take what Yaquan put up in the Quran. Galatians 3.8. Put that back up, Yaquan. Watch. Galatians 3.8, Media Truth. I'm sorry. Galatians 3 and 8 goes with Genesis 4 and 18. So we have taught they the inspired. There you go. And the scripture. For seeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Follow the ways of Abraham. What were the ways of Abraham? The gospel. Galatians 3.8 goes with the Quran, the precept. <laughs> Good job, Yaquan. You trying to keep me on here? It's five hours, man. So we have taught they the inspired message. Follow the way of Abraham, the truth in faith. And he joined not gods with Allah. Well, if you following the ways of Abraham in Genesis 14, 18, he acknowledged that Jesus Christ died and rose again. Remember how they throw you guys off. If they give you the name God, he never called himself God. He told you he was your creator. Join no gods with the creator. The creator. That's who he want to be called. That's who he wants you to know he is. Your creator. Remember now thy creator. So the name God is what throw people off. He never called himself God. When you read your Bible, he told Moses, I am that I am. I am. Then he told you he was the creator. He never said, call me God. So your enemies put God in there to cause stumbling blocks. So when it say, don't join no God with Allah. That's supposed to say, don't join no God with the creator. For I am the creator and there is none else. I am the creator and there is none beside me. 
because he's the creator of Christ. Your brother. He's also the creator of Israel. So when I read my Bible, I just put the word creator there. And now I get to understand it. There is no creator but the creator. He never told you his name was God. He never told you to call him God. That's why they tried to kill Christ because they said he made himself equal with the creator. Not God. The Hebrews didn't use that word. They knew him as the creator. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your king. So our intellectual enemies, they injected God. Why? Give me Psalms 96 and 5. Give me Psalms 96 and 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Now, an atheist that's reading the Bible will say, the Bible contradicting itself. See, right here in Psalm 96, 5, for all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. But the Lord made the heavens. But the Creator made the heavens. But the Creator made the heavens. But the Creator made the heavens. No Lord made the heavens. The creator made the heavens. All I'm doing is putting it in its proper context. Yasin 81 in the Quran. It's not he who created the heavens and the earth able to create the light thereof. Yea, indeed. For he is the creator, supreme of skill and knowledge, infinite. Don't make us teach the Quran. Hear me talking! You know, sometimes a little bit of He's the creator, supreme. I can't go. Supreme. Infinite. Supreme. Allah Akbar. When you acknowledge him as the creator, you acknowledge him as your maker. Making him your father. Every time I say creator, I'm acknowledging him as my maker and my father. And that puts me in a relationship with the Father. Because, oh, you got to ask yourself, what does he want to be called? He told you. 
so the creator. Seal portion nine. Try to get it right with God. He ordained us in the spirit world. Come on out of here. Look at Jason. Third Testament 40 and 78. This knowledge is too high for a fool. We don't cast our pearls before the swine. Quran 35 and 1. Praise be to God, creator of the heavens and earth, who made angels, messengers, with two, three, four pairs of wings. He adds to creation as he will. God has power over eternity. He is the creator. And I'm going to say shalom. When the next time you are work, Yaquan? When you are work again, Yaquan? When you are work, Sabbath? All right. This is what we're going to do this Sabbath. We're going to make the devil mad as hell. We're going to teach the Bible and the Quran and show the world that they both saying the same thing and that they go together like a hand in a glove i think i'm gonna title the lesson teaching the quran and bible at the same time that grace and mercy real. Want to do it? We're going to do it. Get, get all of the children of Israel verses. Get all of the verses where we're supposed to follow Abraham. Get all of the verses where we're supposed to follow Moses. <laughs> get all of the verses of baptism. In the Quran, get all of the verses of Jesus Christ. Nay, in the Quran. Are you ready for that, John Wex? My homie. We're going to teach the Quran. We're going to teach the Bible. This Shabbat. So tell all of the people that want to learn and gain a higher knowledge to come on this channel this Saturday, if the Lord wills, between 9.30 and 10 a.m. We're going to show the world. We come, we coming. We coming this Shabbat. Oh yeah, it's gonna be hot, baby. We gonna show the world that you guys following the same God. Now, if you following man and not the Quran, then you in a religion. If you following the Quran, then you following the gospel of Jesus Christ. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. This is the first and the greatest commandment. The second is like a duet. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others 
as you will have them do unto you. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, look out for the widows. Come on out of here. That's how we rocking it on this channel. We ain't just running our mouth. We live it. We do it. Come on out here. Welcome to America. We ain't just running our mouth. Therefore, stay away. As we battle against the lake, pick up your sword, pick up your shield, put on your plate. Yeah. As we battle against the lake, put on your shoes, tighten your belt, guard your face. Yeah. As we battle against the lake, pick up your sword, pick up your shield. You don't need a pencil and a paper. Tighten your belt, guard your face. Yeah. And we better look and see they got to protect for all of these wicked beings. The fallen the king who forfeited their wings. But who would they to God? To God they cannot stand. The devil coming short and he's having his last dance. But I don't dance. I'm more like y'all boogie. My soul was asleep. The most high shook me. Lost on the road. This is where the road took me. See, I make a right adversary try to push me. Back to the left for not protecting my breath. Every day it doesn't matter. We fight to the last breath. We gotta choose life and not that eternal death Take off the belt of truth Been wrapping the around his neck I testify and confess I'm holy keeping the truth I pray that Kelvin is dead So you know me by my boot I pray that my father's proud I pray I keep his commands I know that y'all got a plan I pray that he let me in Pick up your sword Pick up the shield Put on your plate As we battle against the lake Put on your shoes Tighten your belt Guard your face As we battle against the lake Pick up your sword Pick up the shield Put on your plate As we battle against the lake Put on your shoes Sing it! Guard your face As we battle Sing it! Take what you want You can take my flesh But only by the world Can you give me death We got our trust And we got our breath my best to follow when y'all hold you a step. I got a couple things that we need to regret. When the tribulation take that trial as a test. I'm talking to myself too, that's why I said we. So we can talk with times like our brothers are we. You can't see past the trees if we smoking that weed. Full of that drink or what your life may be. Is it that deep or is your life that cheap? Be up the good no, life to beat that sheep. In love with the wolf that you scared of the sheep. You don't bring it out, Debbie. Grab through the drum, don't ask them teeth. Put your arm around, tighten up them sneaks. Then they go. Pick up the sword, pick up the shield. Put on your plate. Yeah. As we battle against the lake, put on your shoes. Tighten your belt. Guard your face. Yeah. As we battle against the lake, pick up the sword. Pick up the shield. Put on your plate. Yeah. As we battle against the lake, put on your shoes. Tighten your belt. Guard your face. Yeah. As we battle against the lake, put on the music video. Following the crowd, make a choice for yourself. The weed, not for all, that's the boy yourself. So we're selling drugs and saying you employ yourself. They show up hand signs, what they tell on themselves. If you stupid, don't you see they trying to lead you to hell? To hell, people tell they soul, want to rock and roll. Take the key from the enemy and lock your soul. The industry is all about mind control. So they can leave you blind till they plan to fall. I used to be down with it, truth be told. But I ain't going down with it when the fat lady grows. You wanna put the grab on? Put on the chain, tap dance like a damn bone. The world's sick, and it's crazy how it is. You a slave if your life is about chains and whips. Pick up uh. your sword, pick up your shield, put on your plate. Yeah, as we battle against the world. I run, go, go! Tighten your belt, guard your face. Yeah. Alright, Billy Allen. Shalom. I see you guys on the Shabbat. I see you on the Shabbat. Much love, much respect to all of the moderators. I love you guys and I'm keeping you in prayer. We working now. Shalom.